Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics, and for that matter, finite mathematics. The topic in this video is taught in both stats courses and finite math courses. So you may be watching this video in a stats course or in a finite math course, but either way, it does apply to both. Just a reminder, these videos are geared towards individuals who are relatively new to stats or finite math for that matter. So I'll just be going over the very basics. And the problem I work in this video, I will go through very slowly. I will explain everything step by step and very deliberately. Now also in this video, I'm gonna try something new. After the presentation portion of this video, I'm actually gonna do the problem sort of in real time using my video camera. So you will have the more formal presentation to go off of, but I will also show you the problem using actual playing cards as demonstrated in front of my video camera. So you're about to see both. You'll see the formal explanation in the actual sort of real world situation, and you can tie the two together. You may learn better one way versus the other, but probably the best way is to tie both together. So I'm gonna try that, see how it works, and if it works okay, I'm gonna incorporate that into future videos. And finally, if you're watching this video because you're having problems in a course, I want you to keep your head up and stay positive. If you're watching this video, it's because you've already come pretty far in your schooling. And just because you're having a problem now does not mean it has to be that way forever. So, with a little bit of hard work, studying videos like this and others, we can get you through it. I have faith in you and so should you. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we'll continue our discussion of basic counting principles. Now in previous videos, I talked about the basic concepts of permutations and combinations. And then I did follow-up videos explaining each one in more depth. And since then, I've been working on some presentations or videos that are actual sort of standard problems that you're likely to come across when learning this in your coursework. So this video is sort of the next extension of that. So this problem actually involves some combinations involving playing cards. So cards that you would use in like poker or blackjack or euchre or solitaire or things like that. Just a standard deck of 52 playing cards. And I call this problem playing with a full deck. So here is the beginning of our problem. So a deck of playing cards, as you probably or maybe know, consists of 52 cards. Each card is one of four suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, or spades and one of 13 denominations. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, or king, which we call face cards because they have you know, people on them, faces. If you lay the cards out, they actually look like this. So in our first row, we have all of our hearts. So hearts is our suit, and then we have the denominations of ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. The next row is the suit of diamonds, the next row, the suit of clubs, and then the last row, the suit of spades. And then, of course, in our columns, we have each denomination, and that is 52 cards. So in this game, we're gonna, in this video, we're kind of going to talk about the game of poker. And there are many types of poker, but I'm going to stick to the standard five-card poker that, if you played it before, you know what I'm talking about. If you've not played poker before, don't worry about it. You don't need to know how to play poker to understand this problem. If you want to learn poker, there are many sites and resources um, where you can learn more about poker itself, but I'm not going to explain the actual game. So in the game of poker, a hand consists of five cards dealt randomly from a shuffled deck of 52 cards. So usually you deal one card to each person, then you go around and deal one, another card to each person, and so on and so forth, until everyone has five cards, and that's random. So each unique group of five cards is called a hand. So you have five cards, you look at them, and that's your hand. Now, a full house is a special type of hand. Like many things in poker, we have 
straight flushes, four of a kind, royal flushes, two pair. There are all kinds of different outcomes in poker. So a full house is a specific type of outcome. Now it is made up of a set of five cards where three cards are of one denomination, the same denomination. So you might have three eights or three kings or three twos, what we might consider three of a kind. Now, of course, we only have three cards. We've got to have two more. So and the other two cards also match denominations. Now, they cannot be the same denomination as the first three because you would have five cards of the same denomination. That's not possible. There are only four. So you're going to have three cards of one denomination and two cards of a second denomination. The suit of the cards doesn't matter. It's not relevant. The suit on the card is just so you can tell all the twos apart, you can tell the tens apart, you can tell the queens apart, etc. So in this case, for a full house, the suits don't matter. We're only concerned with the denomination. So here are some full house examples if you're not familiar with how this works. So in the top left, you can see that we have three tens and two twos. Below that, we have three kings and two eights. Below that, five, three fives and two fours. On the top right, we have two queens and three jacks. Then we have two threes and three aces. And then two sevens and three nines. So you can see how these hands would look. And again, the suits that are on the cards don't matter for a full house. We just have three of one denomination and two of a second denomination. So you can think of it as three of a kind and two of a different kind. Now just please note that the like kinds don't have to be next to each other, like five, 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 four, four. I just made them that way above so you can see the pattern easier. The order doesn't matter of the cards. It's just sort of a group of cards. Deal order does not matter in poker hands. So here are some questions we're going to answer using our deck of cards. The first question is a pretty standard one. How many different poker hands exist? So if the dealer deals, your, deals you your cards and you look at them, that is one outcome of the deal. But how many total outcomes are actually possible in a poker hand? Number two, how many different full houses, hands of full house, contain three eights and two jacks? So the hand will have three eights and two jacks. And finally, how many different full house hands exist overall? So and the total outcomes in the first question, which is how many different poker hands exist, period, a portion of those are going to be hands that are full houses. So we want to know how many different full house hands exist overall. All right, so to the first one, it's actually pretty simple. How many different poker hands exist? Actually think of physically being dealt five cards. So for this answer, we're just figuring out how many ways we can choose a group of five different cards out of the total of 52. So 52, choose five. And if you're not familiar with that, please watch my other videos on combinations. Of course, we write that as C, 52 comma five. And that actually comes out to 2,598,900 that's how many unique hands you can get in five card poker. Most people would not think it's actually that many, but it is. Almost 2.6 million unique hands are possible in five card poker. It's pretty impressive. Okay, so that's our first question. We actually answered number one already. So about 2.6 million hands are possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the filmed portion of the video. I do apologize for my setup here. It's not quite ideal yet. I will work on that as I do more of them. So let's talk about our playing cards uh, sample using actual playing cards. 
So here I actually have a deck of cards, and you can see every one of them are there. So we have all four suits. We have hearts and our diamonds and our spades and our clubs, and then each domination, ace through king. So if I can spread them out, you can see that, yes, they are all there. Now remember our first question was, in this deck of cards, okay, in this deck of cards, how many combinations could I get as far as a hand of poker goes? Now remember in poker, and standard poker, you just are dealt five random cards. So I've shuffled this up many times, and I'll just do it once more just to show you that I'm not going to stack the deck. Now I deal myself five cards. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, that outcome, as we talked about, is just one outcome out of many. So here you can see I have, well, in terms of poker, I really don't have much. So we'll go ahead and do it again. I'll shuffle them up. Deal myself five more cards. And there we go. That's another outcome. So we talked about in the solution of the first part that there are almost 2.6 million different hands of poker that can be dealt. We've just done two. So there are almost 2.6 million different groups of five cards. And remember, the order doesn't matter. Being dealt this hand is the same as being dealt this hand doesn't matter. It's the same group of five cards. There are almost 2.6 million of those. Okay? Let's go ahead and pause here, and we'll do the second part of our question. Now, how many full house hands contain three eights and two jacks? So on the left-hand side, you can see I have three eights and two jacks just sort of there in a clump. So how are we going to approach this one? Now let's ask ourselves a few basic questions. How many choices do we have for the eights? Well, four. There are four eights in the deck, remember? We have the eight of diamonds, the eight of hearts, the eight of clubs, and the eight of spades. So there are four eights in the deck to choose from. How many choices do we have for the jack? Well, four. There are also four jacks in the deck. So the jack of diamonds, jack of hearts, jack of clubs, jack of spades. So there are four eights and four jacks in the deck. So where do we go from here? Well, you know that we only have four to choose from of each case. And we have three eights and two jacks. Suit does not matter, of course. So we've got to choose three eights and two jacks. Now well, here's how we do that. Now look at the first part of our expression here. We have four choose three. And where does that come from? Well, it comes from our eights. There are four eights in the deck. We're choosing three. So four choose three. That represents the eights. Times four choose two. There are four jacks in the deck. We are choosing two to go into our full house. So 4 choose 2. So 4 choose 3 is 4, and 4 choose 2 is 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. So in a deck of cards, in an actual deck of cards, there are 24 poker hands that involve a full house of 3 eights and 2 jacks. Now, when I do the video portion, I'll actually show you some examples of how this actually will work in the cards, okay? So, in this case, we just have 24. 4 choose 3 for the 8s, 4 choose 2 for the jacks, multiply those together, and we have 24. Okay, so remember in our second question, we were interested in how many outcomes could we have where we have a full house that involves three eights and two jacks. So here are eights of all four suits, and here are jacks of all four suits. Now remember, to get our eights, 
we need three of those for our full house. So that is our four choose three. Now I actually want you to see this, okay? In uh, stats and finite math will be so much easier if instructors actually brought cards and dice and things like that to class. Now some do, but a lot of them do not. So I actually want you to see it. So for the four choose three, this is what we could have. We could have those three, those three, those three, or those three. So how many of those were there? Well, there were four. So four choose three is four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now how about the jacks? We only need two jacks. So we have four, but we're only going to choose two. So of course we could have those two, those two, those two, those two, those, or those. So four choose two. Now how many were they? Let's keep count again. One way, two, three, four, five, six. So, four choose two. So four choose three, four choose two to make our full house. Now every possibility over here, which we had four of them, can be matched with every possibility over here which were six. So I'm going to walk you through just one example of this and you can see how we come up with our final. So let's say I have this three, these three cards, these three eights. Now these three eights can be paired with every outcome on this side. So we could have these three eights and those two jacks, those two jacks, those two jacks, those two, those two, or those two, okay? Then I would do the same thing all over again, but with maybe those three eights. Then I'd do the same thing all over again with those three eights and all the two jacks over here and this over here. So if you remember, we have four choose three, four outcomes here, four choose two, six outcomes here, so 4 times 6 is 24. And that's our actual outcomes in cards of all possible full houses involving 3 8s and 2 jacks. Okay, how many different full house hands exist overall? Hmm. Well, think of it this way. We have three of a kind. I just made three basic blue cards here. That's our three of a kind. And then we have two of a kind. So those two cards will be the same denomination. The reds will be the same denomination and the blue, three blues will also be the same denomination, just like a full house. So look at the blues first. What are we gonna do? For the first thing we have to do is pick a denomination. Well, how many den denominations are there in a deck of cards? Well, there are 13. Ace through king is 13. So we have to pick a denomination to go on our cards. We could pick the number nine. So all three of the blue cards would be number nine. We could pick a queen, and all three of the blue cards would be a queen. So first thing we could do is pick a denomination. So we have 13. Then from each denomination, we would have to choose three out of the four that are in the deck. So if all three blue cards were queens, there are four queens in the deck. So we have to choose three out of those four queens to be represented in the blue cards up there. So pick a domination, which are 13 ways to do that. There are 13 of them. Then from each dom domination, which has four cards, pick three of them. So that's four, choose three. So the, our three of a kind, the blue portion of our full deck, is 13 times 4, which is 52. 
So that kind of covers that half of our full house. Now we go over to the red. And we also have to pick a denomination. But remember, we cannot pick the same denomination that the blue had. So if we have three queens over on the blue side, we can't have any queens in the red. So our number of denominations we can choose from is not 13 anymore, it's 12. So now we pick a denomination of the 12 remaining, so that's 12 choose one, which is 12. Then from each one of those denominations, we have to pick two out of the four cards to go in the red spot. So each of those 12 denominations has four cards. So it might be, you know, the number seven. So there are four sevens in the deck. We need to choose two of them. So that is four choose two, which is six. So we have two steps going on. First, we pick a denomination, and then we pick the number of cards we need from that denomination. So there are four of each denomination in the deck. So in this case, four choose two, which is six. So our two-of-a-kind portion, the red portion, is 12 times 6, which is 72. Now, all we have to do is match each outcome on the blue side to each possible outcome on the red side. It's kind of like matching your pants and your shirt. So to match those two together, we just multiply them. So our total number of full house hands is 52 times... 72, and that comes out to 3,744. So, if you pull five cards out of a, randomly out of a deck of 52, there are 3,744 possible full houses. It's pretty cool, right? So again, I'll show you this sort of in the video portion. We'll see if, if you have any questions, if that clears it up. Okay, so here's our final question. Now remember, in our final question, we were asking how many possible full houses are there overall? Okay, so in those 2.6, almost, almost 2.6 million unique hands in poker, how many of them are a full house? So remember, this was sort of a two-step problem. So here on my left are going to be three cards that represent our three of a kind. Over here, these cards represent our two of a kind. And they're kind of, think of them as general three of a kinds and two of a kinds. Now remember, the first thing we had to decide for these three cards, taking these first, is what denomination are they going to be? Are they going to be all twos, all sevens, all jacks, or whatever? So in this case, I've actually chosen aces, okay, this really doesn't matter. But the first thing I have to do is choose the denomination. So I have 13 choices over here, ace through king. Now once I choose the denomination, which I have 13, I get to choose three out of the four cards in that denomination. So in this case, I chose the ace as my denomination, but there are four aces in the deck. So I choose three of them to be this side of the full house. So I have two steps. I have 13 choices for denomination, and then I have four choose three choices for the actual cards. Right there. So again, that, come, that came out to 52. So, two choices going on. Choose the nomination, and once you do that, you choose three out of the four cards to go here for that denomination. Over here, it's the same pattern, except over here, we don't have 13 choices for denomination. We only have 12. And remember why that is. We chose ace over here. Now why can't we have ace over here? Well, this should be quite obvious, is that that would mean we need five aces. And there, there aren't five aces in a real deck of cards, at least not one that's actually fair. So 
That's why we have 12 choices for denomination over here, because the denomination of ace is now out of the question. Okay, you cannot choose ace. So now we have 12 choices for denomination over here. I'll go ahead and turn these over. So instead of 13 choices, or 13 choose one, I now have 12 choose one. Now again, once I choose the, the denomination, in this case it's nines, I gotta pick two of the four nines out of the deck, or two of the four sevens, or two of the four threes, whatever. So 12 choose one for the denomination, and then four choose two to pick the actual two cards of the four in the deck of that denomination. So we have sort of two steps just like we have in our video. 13 choose one for denomination and then four choose three for the actual cards coming out of the deck in that denomination we chose. Over here we have 12 choose one. 12 denominations because we can't have this one. 12 choose one and then we got to choose two of the four cards of that denomination out of the deck. So we multiply all that together, that's 52 times 72, which was 3,744. So this hand here is just one full house out of a possible 3,744. All right, so that wraps up the film portion of our video. Let's go ahead and wrap up the video, the PowerPoint video, all together. Now, just a little side note here, a little extension. So just for fun, what is the probability of being dealt a full house using this one deck of cards? What's the probability? So the probability of a full house is the number of full house hands divided by the total possible hands. Because remember, the full house hands are just sort of a subset of all possible hands, which we found out, by the way. So the, the probability of a full house is 3,744 divided by our 2,598,960. So full house hands divided by total possible hands. And that is 0 0.00144, or you can think of it as 0.144%. It's pretty low odds, isn't it? It's very rare. So the, the probability of getting a full house if you're randomly dealt five cards from a deck of cards is about 0.15%. It's a very rare occurrence. Okay, so that wraps up our video on basic counting principles, an extension of our uh, topic of combinations. And in this case, we're using playing cards. So we just learned how to select groups again. And then later on in the problem, we talked about how to select groups based on certain criteria or certain constraints. In this case, a special type of hand in poker called a full house. And it's just counting. It's just combinations. Okay, so just remember, if you're watching this video because you're having a problem in a course, stay positive and, and keep your head up. Hopefully this video helped, and I know along with it, other videos and hard work, you can get through it. I do have faith in you. So, all that being said, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.